All right, welcome to the Town of Acton Planning Board meeting for June 1st, 2023 at 6 p.m. Uh, I'll stand for the pledge. To the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adam, you're going to vote tonight. Just put you in as the well, alternate. Yes. Yeah, okay. Did uh, everyone get a chance to review May 18th meeting minutes? Do we have enough people to vote on? Uh, no, you want a table. Well, I don't. I think we need. Uh, yeah, we can't. We're gonna have to table the minutes. The table, we have to table the minutes. All right. <coughs> table them. All right. First up is Brian Perry, six six eight Thirteenth Street, Map one four three, Lot zero three four. Application for greatest practical extent. Good evening. Uh, just my name is Steve Olson from Oil Plains. On behalf of Glenn, who prepared the plan, with me tonight is Brian and Bill Ryan and his wife Sandra. Um, we're here to answer any questions you may have after the site walk. Is the garage going up this year too? Okay. So the garage, um, with that being said, the garage is not part of this application. The application at hand is the house because that's what falls within the 100 feet. So <clears throat> um, our concern right now is um, the greatest practical extent on the primary, on the, the dwelling of the house. Um, Is it an option to why? The main concern, the primary concern is that the garage for the design, yeah. it's the limitation between those two structures. And the other aspect is we're trying to keep within that existing footprint as much as possible as opposed to shifting anything. This is a daylight basement, is that why? Yeah. You'd have to He's looking to have a daylight basement. He's hoping. <laughs> we'll use those it's words. It's on a wish list. It's it, it, yeah. Hey. Yeah, it has not. So uh, Ryan, you didn't go there. Behind the house is all flat ground. He's on he's his house right now, the the deck, the edge of his deck is where it starts to crown down and head down a pretty steep slope. Um, you can look at the contours, that's where it kinda shows you. Yep. Um, <clears throat> right now, it's just uh, pretty much a crawl space, I would say, underneath the house, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, he's looking to put a full foundation on it um, where it will sit a little bit higher uh, and allow for that, that um, walkout. Well, 
So you have your your ten foot side back your side right here. If we look at this, how come you can't shift the garage max out that ten feet and then pull this house back right. so that it's parallel with that corner? And so then you the question is that that I'd be moving the driveway and everything over to shift to that as well. So right now the plan was to keep that existing driveway as best as possible. And then the other concern is that the question is, so I mean, it's not on this permit, but I, they, I need a well. And the plan is to have a point well, and I need some access to be able to get. And if I, if I, if I move the garage too far over, I'm gonna be limited that way, right? In terms of how much space to get around um, to anything in the back of the house. You're doing it, it's drilling a well. Drilling a well, yeah. And where's the well you're going to drill? Where's it going? I think I heard it in this area. Yeah, it'd be in that area. Because the septic, they're trying to get away from the septic, and there's the, the owner across the side has their well close to that proximity area. So How far off area. would that be from the septic? Roughly. How far will it be? <clears throat> I think he's allowed, the state will allow it down to like 60 feet with a variance. Okay. 60 to 80. I can't quite remember off that one off the top of my head. Yeah. At that point, you're about 85 feet. Why wouldn't you drill the well before you built the garage? Well, we, we will, but if there's any work that has to be done, right? That, if that garage is over, then any work that has to be done in back of that house for any reason is, would be a problem with that restriction. As it sits in this drawing, what's the clearance between the garage, the proposed garage and the house now? And this thing, I, four I think, feet or five feet? I think it was five. What would be the Right now we have it at five feet. Okay. <clears throat> and sliding the house back and attaching it to the garage is not an option? Well, right, well, part of the design, I mean, right now, the issue, so first of all, the, the house design does not, does not attach the rocks. We change the design of the house and we change the garage. But the other aspect is when any company comes from the driveway, they, that's what they're going to walk through that gate to the, to the water, not going through the house to the garage. Say that again. So just when company comes, right now, right, we don't have the garage there, but when company comes, they park in the garage, uh, they park in the driveway, right, and you walk down to the lake. If we put a attach, if we attach those two things, mm -hmm. that's going to change the design of the house, and anybody that comes to visit is coming through the house to go to the lake. You can't walk around the other side of the garage? Well, that's what we would change. So aesthetically, it, it, correct. It, if you, we change the aesthetics, it would be walking towards the neighbor's house to go loop around to come down the water, right? That would be the, the solution not aesthetically what we wanted. So right now you have uh, 14 feet on this corner in front of the hundred, because you're at, you have you said your porch is eight feet, in, in correct. Your, correct. And so six and eight, yeah, and then 
Yes, yeah, so we were trying to think. Originally, I was talking to somebody can move it south, but then that puts even more within the hundred feet, and so that didn't work. Right now, the layout is at thirty percent, and we meet the requirements of DEP and town regulations. And here's another question for you. And I know you got this patio right here, but how come the house can't shift this way a little bit and then backwards? And that would give you your walkway? Your walk at your gate? If you came towards Well that's so that that's to what we were working through is can we shift a little bit to the south, right? Mm -hmm. But what that's doing is it's pushing more of the footage into the hundred square feet. And we'll be over the thirty percent. What are you at the top half? How far are you off in the hundred foot at the top for one hour? Yeah, but if you if you go south and then back and then back towards the Thirteenth Street a little bit more, <laughs> um, I I I mean if, if you if you go, you go back five feet, you don't have that much room to work, in between those two. I mean, I can give it a, as I was mentioning, where that back line is, you know, I think with the five feet, I can move it back one more foot, right? And that's four feet to the That'd garage. That'd be four feet walk between. Right, so that, that would be sufficient for walk. It would take it off another, you know, foot off the, the hundred. Tip, just to give you a perspective, a typical door in your house is 30 inches, three feet max. So you're not giving yourself a lot of room between the two structures to walk, get lawnmower, get your grill, patio furniture. So five feet is more of an ideal <clears throat> walk around. Why wouldn't you walk around the other side of the garage? Closest point of proximity. Everybody walks the closest point of proximity. You walk around, you go towards the house, you walk down the patio there versus going right around the garage and further away in order to get down to it. Generally, my plan is I have, have two, I know it's not going to be a, a solid problem. I have two boat trailers that can go on the side there on the grass, right, in the season. So it's going to be very difficult to have a lot of people walking around with the boat trailers there. Just a hundred. If if we talked about moving south and back a little bit, where's the hundred foot line on the south side here? It's it's right here. It goes right right behind the LP tank. Okay. So the, so the further south you move, the more you yeah. this hold the line. Uh, I'll give you a little zoom in here, John. So this has a six here, and the existing deck is eight feet. So this is this is the proposed porch. Uh, so you're at, you know, like I was just saying earlier, 14 feet versus, you know, 16. I'm um, actually is this is this six? Do you happen to know if that's the whole wall right there, or if that's just what's in front of the? No, that's the whole wall. It's okay, like, so you're you're, you're at more of four. Is it 12 feet. Okay, I'm sorry. I think we take them up on the one foot offer so it's no closer than 87. 89. 89, 8. <clears throat> Not moving at all. Move it back a foot. 
to shrink that gap between the garage and the house. <coughs> Oh, hey. No, I'm just thinking. <laughs> well, I've been talking to you, over a little bit more and then moved the house back. See, I don't know, five feet? Again, we'll be ripping up the existing driveway and redoing the whole driveway entrance. And right now we're trying to line it up with the driveway that's already there and not having to change any driveway setup or anything else. Just keeping the natural flow of what's already existing. the one foot but I'm only one guy you clearly have some issues with it no it's just you know I, I get the convenience of it all and yeah stuff, but it's not a perfect situation for sure but when there's room to move there's room to move that's just my personal opinion I agree you can't just settle on something out of convenience I don't think Got a motion now. And if you and Chris agree, what's, what, what do you want to, what's the proposal? What are you thinking? I'd like to, I'd like to see if the, if the garage can be rearranged. I mean, yes, I know, you know, moving it over five feet, um, that's not, I don't think that's gonna really affect the driveway a whole lot. Um, is it convenient? No, but I think uh, I think by doing that and then allowing that to shift the building, the main house back, I think is the existing driveway is what gravel. Yeah. And per the regulations, we're allowed to go up to that thirty percent. That's all we're trying to do is adhere to the regulations. Of the well, this is for greatest practical extent, and the, that is to move you as far off the water as the board deems, you know, so yes, you're allowed your 30%, right? But yeah, we're not arguing about we're that. We're not, so the location. But, yeah, so I, I get your what you're saying, but they're also trying to figure out why can't the structure go back further? Right? Is, is there any position in the air. I mean if you look look at that property and you guys have walked it, right? See the topo. So I have a half an acre where more than half of it is down here. Granted I bought it, right? I bought it as is. And we're trying to move up here permanently. I've got a flat spot for this property which is less than half of the property I own. I am one of the few houses up on the hill on 13th Street. Most of them have the, the camps and the rebuilds are all within the 25 if not 75 upstream to me I think we've been trying to make accommodations to stay within the 30 to respect the hundred right of what we're doing I didn't do anything else down protected the shoreline I'd like to have a house that I'd like to move in here permanently and relocate to if I can't make this work I'm gonna have to figure out what my other options are I mean I know it's an appeal right but uh, you know as I'm moving the garage as it is looked at the site that shed okay that's going to have to move because you can't get in the sh you can't get in the garage with the shed there so then the shed has to has to move and then it, that driveway those trees would come out and I'd move the how do you get into the driveway that way so I'm losing my flat space by moving more of this so it's an appeal I understand it you know but I you know feel I'm fairly respectful within the hundred and have very minimal going within that 75 and, and 100 foot on a lot of this hill.
Do you have the, like, the uh, real pictures of it? I do. So this is the um, south southern side. Yeah. You don't have one on the driveway, huh? Probably not, because this is about the st structure. Driver is where this car is parked, but it's not obviously. It help us. What were the trees on the side of the driveway? That's what I'm trying to remember, to be honest. Yeah, they a little maple on the pine. Yeah. They weren't very big. Right. Oh, those, those are scrubs. Those are scrubs. They're in the front. If you look at, see what that shed is on the back? It's, it's on, on the, the back side of the shed, right? No, no, it's in the front side, on the road side. Okay. So this, I don't know if I can just, I don't think I can pull from my phone for you, but. figure out a good way to get it back. How far are you thinking? Would you want to see it back? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We just got to figure out how far. And what's the best option? Move it, move it down south and then back. Move the garage. Or some combination of both. It's right. the difference. That's the other option. Do two and a half feet, three feet this way, two feet that way. <coughs> and then shift them back. room to go south. Looks like you might have. I was just don't think of the shrub. You know, three feet. Shit. They give them seven feet off the ten foot step back. <coughs> Just was pointing it out. You, yeah. You've got to be careful going south. You Why not? You don't want to end up putting more of the house in there. Right. Well, let's move them three feet south. Move the garage two feet, and then move the house back. Would that give you or something to that effect? Yes. And. So go towards the south setback and then backwards? Yeah, this way. Rush up a little <coughs> and move it back. How far? Well, that's what we gotta figure out. It is, you don't have to move it south too far to have to really kick it west right. to get it out of that. Right. You know. And 
that way if you move the garage up. Move that back, you're moving it more out. the front of the garage from the center of 13th Street? It's 50, right now it's 50 feet off that setback right there. This is his building envelope, is what this, okay. this, this, uh, gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, so you in the house, if that's the, that solid lines, the building envelope to the south of the house. That yeah. right there. Yeah. So it just it doesn't work. We'd have to move them too far west to be outside of the building envelope to bring it south. And if you move the garage up towards the other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You hear. Taking both from each side. This is what they're trying to figure out right now. That's the sheet that, that we work with. It's just the first, it's just the top one. The rest of it's this packet. Yep. a little on each side that's my opinion and then move it how about how far though we got to get it what are your thoughts on doing so i know you want to maintain that space between the two structures simply for walkthrough what are the thoughts on simply having a man door on the back of the garage you know i know i mean your concern was having guests you know be able to easily get from the front of the garage or inside the garage or whatever back to the, the patio area it seems to me, you know, you could even put a garage door. You could garage. even put a five foot double door back there if you want to get, you know, long equipment through or something like that. That would maintain your, you know, your ability to get, you know, through that structure into the backyard. And that was one of the that we had discussed. Is it was a flat no. We have a park, you know, it's two of us in this, right? Sure. And we're not having people walk through the garage to get to the back of the house, right? So it's not a, not a non-starter. Okay, yeah, I'm just you know, just trying to come up with some ideas yeah, to help. The other rod, we're, you know, trying to do attach it right, and that, that even get into a whole nother kettle of fish relative to redesign the house. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't. So Jason, if you could point to the, see that shed on the top here, right up there, see the other side of the road side in that shed? Mm -hmm. So right, that whole section is tree. Okay. That's what I was talking about, so those trees. So if we move everything over, those trees and everything is, it would be coming out, right? And then I don't know what the heck would, you know, the problem. That's the end of the road. Yeah. So moving that shed, moving the garage that much that way just changes the whole what I'm going to do with the front. Mm -hmm. How does moving the garage change the trees on the roadside of the shed? So, it, so it's right now, the driveway. yeah, if you where you where Jason had the mouse before on the other side of the shed, that is uh, basically think of it as it's trees. Right. So there's no that shed's not exposed to the road. Right. Right. So all the trees are there. So if we move this garage. You can't, you can't get into the, this, from right now, the way that is, that, that left bay, when you look into the garage, you're gonna be angling, right? But the good news is the garage door, right, you have some room. If that shed moves over much further, 
then you've got to come in the driveway and turn into the garage and then straighten out. So, well, it, 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 the, right, so we have to figure out how to straighten out that whole corner and then figure out what we're going to do with this gravel section over here in the garage. What if you were to take the garage and twist it a little bit so that the that, that back corner right where the arrow is move that corner back towards the line then you would have more of a more space down on the lower side to move the house back then you wouldn't have to rearrange you you know you the driveway basically would stay the same i just Typically, I just need to look at it, I'm sorry. I was going to say, typically from an architectural standpoint, you try to have buildings in the same direction. You don't try to catty corner it and make it all look dysfunctional and disorganized when you line up buildings. You try to make them all in some sort of <coughs> alignment. You start twisting <coughs> one and you're going to start questioning, why did they do that? It doesn't, doesn't look right when you drive by it. So if you look at the neighboring garage, it's in the same line kind of look at the flow of everybody's houses and they try to line everything up. What's magic about the size of the garage? Two car garage? It's a two car, but I'm a woodworker. In retirement, I need the space in the upstairs with the two holes. So the combination of those two, plus, you know, the motorcycle storage, right? so the dimensions on it were, right, to try to shrink it wouldn't, Is there any part of this that you are flexible on? Well, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I mean, I, no, but we're the, trying to work with you as well. So when we came at this, the reality is we're, we're, we're dealing with what we have, right? right? Which is less than half of our property is usable, right? And so that's where, from a design perspective, right, we try to keep within the 30%. And originally, we actually tried to make it 1,500 square feet, and we couldn't. And the reason was we tried to do all the things, right? And that's why it became this site, became bigger than when we started. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at, where we're at. And so the flexibility was, you know, come back to one foot. I think we have another, another foot or so to give on the other part, but I, I can't move this thing all off a hundred. It's not gonna, right? So I've got a couple feet to play with, but not much more. Otherwise, I've got to go back to the architect or architect with the drawing board, and we've been at this so many times, I'm like, I, I don't know if we're going to do it, because it's just too, right? We tried to work a design of a, of a house that we, we could retire in, sure. right, on the property we have, um, and we think we have it. We think we have the design, and we <coughs> tried to, you know, we even shrunk, originally we had a larger porch, and then we didn't have the 30%, so we shrunk, we shrunk that deck down to make, to make that work. Right. So that's what we've been struggling is to make sure we complied with what we could and we tried to keep it within that, you know, existing footprint as best we could. Did I hear you just say you might get two feet? Yeah, I think we have five, right? So if that, that five from down to four, right? So, so right now, um, like the, the back of the house has, right? So we're, right now we're a foot shy of the current foundation, right? So the minimum go back, we should okay there. It's the, I think we're at the two feet is the max is when I was talking to Glenn that we have to play with that before it becomes totally unusable. Right, that, that separation wouldn't be a fire code, it would be a problem. So, unless, I don't know if that's...
I, I would say the one foot is about where you want to go in order to give yourself the ability to walk between the two structures. <clears throat> and you wouldn't shift the garage one foot to get your back to your, you know what I mean? I'd have to go, I mean, I'd, I'd have to go look at what, how much room we have there. Because that's what I was eyeing at the other end, <coughs> like, because that's, because if you, if, going you through, I'm like, okay. cool. if you were willing to give two feet and then shift the garage one foot, then that puts you right in the same situation that you said you could, you'd be at four feet, right, between that, the two, between the two structures. I think right now it's five, so we're shifted to one foot, gets you down to four. Shift it another foot, gets you down. And then the shift the garage up one more to the sideline one that brings you back to four. So Dave, I'm gonna have to figure out the garage shifting because yeah. when I lined up right now, I was actually the, the garage is actually past where the driveway is now. It's you know behind the, the shrub. And but the, the fortunate part is the garage doors, right, are inside, right? So I you know that doesn't really matter, you can drive right in. If you start, if the garage door starts to get behind that, then that's where you know, we get into how would you how would you deal with that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, are you doing two doors or one? Two. And we're also on a curve, so it changes the angle of the to the garage. Mm -hmm. Very good. I don't know, do you want to go back and look at it and refigure your garage or, and then come back or? And the problem is we're having is it's got to go back. There's room to make it go back. It's, it's it, we got it, that's, it's kind of, and when we know it's not an easy process regardless, one way or another. is going back foot but it can go back more well the house is that technically go back two feet go back more than two feet you see what i'm saying there's more room that you could go back and uh, if you worked it right somehow that's why i'm asking if you want to go back and reconfigure the garage or if we move the house up can you give us a variance to move the garage up Parents of zoning issue. So, that that's that's not for this board to decide. No, no that's no. We're also trying to use the existing foundation area that's already there, disturbed area that's already there, for the most part. By shifting it now, you're build out, you tear up the ground. You not yeah. I'm sorry on that one. You're digging up, you're tearing down a building, digging up a whole new hole for a foundation. You're not going to tell me you're not disturbing the whole gray area? We are disturbing the area, but you're also disturbing what's already previously impervious, previously disturbed. What did you, what were you saying, John? Just, just one foot? We can get a foot, I think we should take a foot. <clears throat> but I'm apparently outvoted on that. <laughs> well, you can make a motion. the ground either way. You know what I mean? 
Oh, I, I know what you mean. I mean, I, I did figure out how to move the whole house off the 100 foot mark and change the whole, but it's not anything I want to buy and do and spend my money on. No, I understand I, I that. I can figure that out, but um, I mean, I, as I say, I go back, I was, if we go back to foot, I think I can go back two feet, right? And if we go back two feet, I'll go back to the architect, right? And I'll try to figure out how we're going to make that work, right? More than two feet, I'm at a loss because I'm, you know, we've been at this for a while, yeah. trying to figure out aesthetically what we we're trying to do with the property we have. Um, it's not a, you know, as I say, we try originally tried having a smaller house that was, you know, going to make it a lot easier, and that didn't work because of just the livable space that we would have. You know, the reason we're doing this is so, you know. Our kids and grandkids can come up on the weekends and spend some time and not have to go home every weekend because it's a, you know, a small camp. That's what it is right now. Well, after seeing those steps, I'd want to go home. You'd have another heart attack right now. Right. <laughs> well, I, you guys can do what you want, but Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the uh, application of greatest practical extent for Brian Perry at 668 13th Street in Acton uh, with a condition that the building is no closer than 90 feet 8 inches which is two feet more than the current plan. Any second? I'll second it. All in favor? All opposed? So, fails. That motion failed. All right. You guys got to figure out what you want to do. Jamie, you need to give the applicant some direction now. Right, well, I'm trying to, I mean, if you're willing to, you said you're going to go look back at the garage and try to figure something out there. Well, well, that was with the, you know, if I go back two feet, right, from where it is now, it's already two feet back. Right. So I go back a total of four feet, right, from what we're doing. Then with that, I'll go figure out what I can do with the garage. If I come back more than what this is, with more than the two feet that this proposed here, then I, I don't know how I can work it, right? Because I think I got enough wiggle room. But as I say, I've tried to do this and I get too far over there where it doesn't work. I can't move it this way. I get boxed in there. Moving it this way it only makes the matter worse. Anything I do. What, what's the big deal if you move it that way and get boxed in? I don't understand. Like, what? Are you, what's your thought? Why are you saying you're going to get no, boxed be, in? Because of the things I stated before, which is right now we come off the driveway and you're going to go in the garage and it's going to be very consistent. Right, but I'm saying... We have. If you go much further that way, you're going to change the way we're going to come in the driveway. That gap that I have between the property lines right now, which there's a fence there, right? That becomes pretty much unusable for me. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do, boat trail, but so that is basically an alleyway. Um, and that's, those are the things that you know, I've already worked through and have struggled through and come back and said, no, this, this, this is the best I can do with the current design. And we've been at this design for over a year. I'm saying bring it back down this way and kick it back. Move the whole thing back. But you move it down here. I don't understand why you're handicapped there. Or, no, but I thought you know I what I mean? They're bound up there. It doesn't make sense to me because you can get ladders back there. You can get a kayak back there. 
if you move your house over the, closer to the 10 feet mark. Yeah, no, so if we do that, but I thought it was in a bigger problem with the 30%. So now I'm... I'm, well, I'm just, we're not talking about the 30%. We're talking about the 100 feet, right? Yeah. I don't because he's trying to shift you backwards. So even if you go if you go south, south and then back, back is kind of what he's trying to. Yeah, I, I don't know what my, you've seen that you did the walk. So I yeah. mean, so yeah, you, there is you go this way. So I'm still. So if you go back, so you're basically pulling me back 12 feet. Is that what you're doing? Down. I'm moving saying. you over and Shift then moving you way. back. Two feet, shift away. You're that still way. within your building print. You're still you're you're shifting it down. No, no, but I, I'm coming back already two feet from that current line, and you're saying that's not good enough. But you're, so we'll see how much further. Problem the is house is going back, but your porch is staying where it is. So yes, your main structure is, but you're still getting all that still in front of the hundred. The goal from the planning board is to try to get as close as they can to meeting current setbacks. The current setbacks is no structures within a hundred feet of the water. That's what they're trying to do right now. Is right. is so if you shift over, shift back, you're gonna get out of out of this, out of more out of the hundred foot. Instead oh no, of, okay, I, I get no, no, I'm hundred percent with you. But if you go to the go to the north, the, the northwest corner. No, no, keep it by the house, by the house. See the setback where it's very narrow to the, yeah, go up. That's it's very narrow. Yeah. So you're now shifting the house that's back. Coming, that's coming back too. So this, you're going to come down. This is going to come back. The whole oh, thing. you've taken me way back. You've taken. And you still can have a day walk out basin. So you're it, saying down two and then back two? Yeah, or two or three. You know, you still can, it still can work. So how far back are you asking us to come? Because that, just for reference, right. what I have to come back with is what you're proposing is I need to go rationalize right. this, right? Because no, I get it. The issue right now is we, there are, there's trees. Right. We've got a narrow shot down the lake, right? When you step out into the, aesthetically, when you're sitting in the, in the family room. Yeah, but there's no trees here. No, 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 you could. Bear with me. Yeah. So aesthetic, and then we're talking aesthetically. This lake house has a narrow chute that you have waterfront. I think you saw that. Yeah. Right? So okay. you shift the whole house over this way. My view is that the whole design changes because I now have to fix, change all the windows to line up with the water view is now. So that's going to be a redesign. I have to go figure out what that looks like and what that's possible. You actually probably have a better view if you shift it at three, three yeah. to four feet. But you know, it's straight, straight trees. But, yeah, so that, but I didn't need to know what the ask is, right? Because if the expectation is I'm coming 100% off the 100 feet, I, I, like, cause I, as I say, with the, if I come additional two feet, right, I can kind of play with that, right? Because I, we're boxed in. But I need to know am I coming, if you're asking me to come back five, right? They am going back to the architect. That that is clear, right? With, with these, with any changes to go accommodate this. Most likely, yeah. Yeah. Can you go back to the site plan, Jason? Yes. That way, your garage kind of stays the same. You're going to open up that little space a bit bigger if you shift just the house and move back. No, no, I, 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 Chris, I totally understand what you're talking about. In, but the design of the house right, is designed right. so that when you're looking out, right, you get the lake. you're looking down at the water. And so what now we're going to be looking at trees. So I'm going to have to change the design of that house to figure out how I get to maintain that view. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like going to Fenway Park. <laughs> so if I were to put a foundation underneath this house, right? Mm -hmm. It's sagging, folks. It went, if I were to put a foundation underneath this house, do you still go for greatest practical extent? You still go for greatest practical extent. Yeah, because anytime you add concrete to the ground, if it's within, so yes, because your foundation's in front of the hundred. If the foundation wasn't in front of the hundred and you were just dealing with your your porch was staying there, yes, you would go. Well, I mean, there are frost posts throughout the whole front of the deck. There's concrete frost posts throughout the whole front. So anytime you add concrete structures within the hundred feet, it is it triggers greatest practical extent. So in order to take down the deck and put a concrete 
anything. Yeah, it would trigger. It would trigger that. Um, and I've had people come into my office for just uh, they wanted to put an extremely small addition on their house, but it was in front of hundred, and they yeah, they didn't want to deal with the greatest practical extent either. So they figured out a different way to do it. Um, <clears throat> so I think what some of the board members are, are struggling with, um, Brian, is so like for right now, I just sh I just showed it to your consultant. Um, factors that prevent the structure from meeting current setbacks. All right, so roadside setback finding there you you meet your you have plenty of roadside setback. Other structures, exi existing septic system, historical structure, slope or grade, potential soil erosion, well, ledge, uh, amount, of, amount of vegetation that would be, you know, in impacted. So that's what I think some of these, a couple of the board members are, are struggling with um, on, on why this can't meet current setbacks or get closer to the current setback. Am I right by saying that or am yeah, I? Yes, yeah. Okay. But I'm still not clear. So is the expectation I'm gonna come back here with 100% of that behind the 100 feet? I, 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 How much would you want to take a short back? back? So once you get to go back, uh, the main structure is, got, is what, six feet off? Uh, it looks like it's the main structure is four feet behind, in front of the hundred. The porch is eight feet currently right now. Mm -hmm. But it's going to go to ten. Right. The, the porch is staying where it is. The house is going back two feet. That's so right, it's two gonna, feet that porch is going to grow. Okay. So it's going to grow. grow on um, side. I don't know if it's east or west, but uh, west, 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 west or west. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I should have looked at the north. <laughs> so it's um, 88 eight from the from the lake. Currently, it's 88.8. Yeah, from the lake, uh, and it's going to. And they're we're hoping for it to stay 88.8. From the corner of that porch, but the house was going to go back um, two feet off its current footprint to grow that porch to ten feet instead of eight. Well, the other thing is too is that moving it down and then moving it back is one of the things you guys were concerned about was ground disturbance is you're going to you're not going to have to take out part of that brick patio and that stairway brick patio is coming. Oh, no, no, i was only told the corner was coming out by uh yeah well, uh, we were told only a corner of it was luke or whoever his name was yeah, we got to come at least four feet off i mean the front walk is coming out well, they're gonna have to remove if they're gonna put a foundation in that patio is gonna get just just destroyed. So if you shift it away from there, I mean, what's a number we're comfortable with? It's not even. It's not really our role to figure out how to achieve it or what. Right. Right. Or, or what you know he's he's willing to do but it's our job to figure out what we're comfortable with what are you thinking for a good number you want it oh you know I <coughs> the, the goal is a hundred right hundred is probably not reasonable I, I think based on what you guys are saying, you should tell the applicant to go back and work the design to give us as many feet as possible away from 88.8. .8. Can we extend that one, two, four feet, whatever? Looking at his overall design to include the house, the garage. So basically to work with the architect and come back with a best and final. Yeah. Because clearly the board, right. some of the board isn't isn't willing right now for good reasons. I mean, there is room to go back. 
But I think to move this along, Chris, I think that's what you need to do. Right. Oh. If you if you try to arbitrarily come up with a number, I think right. that's going to be crazy. Well, we need a motion on it. I don't think you need a motion. I think you need to give direction to the. To the you denied the. the well, we didn't deny anything. We, it was voted down. Right. The, uh, proposal to approve it with a condition. Is that fair? To me, it's down, but whatever. Over two feet and then two more feet to the road. Is that acceptable? If you're saying go south, well, I think that's south. It goes over two more feet. And then. Well, I think that's what they they yeah. made a motion to do something to move it back two feet and it failed. No, my motion was for two feet. Two feet back, but it didn't make a motion of the two feet south. So if we go two and two, uh, my motion was based on how close you are to the pond. Okay. Right. So you're right now at 88 west. feet. My motion was to get you at 90.8. We'd just be guessing at how much. Right. So if we were to be left, if we went two feet back, two feet to the right, you're south. just guessing. That's what I'm saying. We'd right. have, we'd have to see that. I think that would be the best thing to do is sit down with him or is it, well, I forgot the other fellow's name. Might be the architect too. Yeah. The and try to get it up. That, that may be an option. We would just have to see where it would land. I'm saying that's what you were asking, to go south. So if you go two feet and then move it two more than what I proposed is get to four, is that acceptable? Then we can, if we have to, move the garage. So you're saying your closest point would then be 92.8? Well, we don't know. We, we don't know that. We're guessing it. Yeah. That's the we problem. Don't, we don't know where that would land it exactly to that yep. to that line. <sighs> it almost looks like that concrete. This is. Your measurement's going to stay pretty, pretty well close to where it is right now. Looking at the contour of the waterfront. What was that? I just missed that whole thing. And if you were to go shift south two feet, you're not going to affect your your you distance were. from the water too much. If you look at the how, what it's. I don't know. I'm not. I just want to go back. I think you should sit down with them and try to rework it or something. Try to get some more of it out of there. That's the best I can give you. What do you think, Adam? I, I know it's frustrating, um, but like within the parameters that that Jason spoke about. You know, you do have the room to move it. Okay, it, it's not it's not um, easy. It's not the way you want to do it. We understand that, but I think what you need to do is is you need to go back and make some concessions and moving it south a little bit, and then also moving it back and seeing what you can work with, and then come back to us. I won't wish I was within the 75 an existing structure. <laughs> it would have been easy, right? Because right? I can't move it up the hill, right? Right? We would have had a different conversation. It's a bit frustrating to be one of the most conforming on this street convenience, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, uh, new business, Matt Leck. Uh, Nason Road, map 230, lot 005-002. Conditional use application for storage of rental equipment. Uh, so this property is owned by uh, James and Elizabeth Kittredge, but they have, he has written consent as a lease agreement um, to use that property and we believe, did we add that to this? Yes, we did. Uh, so 
It's more of just a letter of authorization to speak on that land right now. Um, you want to just get these guys up to speed on what you're going to be doing there sure. and stuff, please? I so I'm just looking for a, a landing area for, uh, we have equipment rental, uh, skid steers, mini excavators, smaller stuff, chippers. Um, so we're just looking for a landing area for that stuff. Um, and a small st a shed just for power and uh, storing smaller compactors, uh, generators, stuff like that, smaller stuff. So would you expanding the existing clearing? Nope. Okay. Not cutting any trees. Just planning on going in there with a uh, mow it with the area that's there. Mm -hmm. It already has a um, driveway entrance with a gate. Um, it was a log landing, so they had it gated off. Um, it's already been flattened and cleared. It's just the area that they put on that is what the clear cleared area is on that plan. Any permanent footings or anything for the shed or just? Nope. This is a, um, so you missed the last meeting. He came in for a, um, just like a consultation, um, just to see where we wanted to go with it. Uh, this is just uh, for temporary. So he's looking just, um, he's, he's currently seeking out other properties. So this is just a, um, uh, a place to store until he can find something else. Um, it's not a like a five-year plan yeah it's not yeah it's not meant to be there forever it's just uh, to get out of my house for right yeah now. he lives in a subdivision and he has they have regulations in that subdivisions which don't allow him to do what he's doing gotcha so he's he this land is owned by one of his um his good friends and they let him use it if if the board allows it did i sum that up for you matt yep oh, perfect. <laughs> appreciate it thank you This is in the um, transit, the, the lot, the, the clearing is in the uh, transition district. He is proposing a, um, a small uh, oh, 10 by 20 shed. What um, use are you uh, in the use chart? Are you let's fall under? Um, the only the only way I can go with it because you get the building is professional businesses and services having less than 2,500 square feet of gross floor area. Um, other than that, the only way I can go with something that would be storage. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. But we we don't have that's the problem. We don't have a storage, but we have. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay. There's the other. They either fell into I or J. Which is our, sim yeah, uses which are similar to conditional uses. Uh, okay, yeah, I, that's conditional use.
And the property's bigger than two acres, right? Yep. Yeah, it's 10, 20. 20. Okay. Uh, he can't, that property is, most of that property is encompassed with um, Small resource protection. Yeah. Not where he is. No, okay. no, a little corner of that uh, landing goes into the resource protection, but he's aware of it and is not going to go within there. Where is that corner? Um, you see the blue, the... Where the proposed shed is? Yeah, the blue hatched line oh, is, yeah, yeah, is yeah. your research yeah. okay. dotted line. Um, I should have had a, sorry, I don't have a digital copy. I would have. And the shed's far enough away from that? The shed is far enough away from it, and the shed is far enough away from the road, too. Yep. How far from the wetland there is the shed? Oh, it's outside. So you, you could put the shed right on that. The corner of it can be on the blue blue dotted line blue because that's your buffer you can't go any close to that buffer. oh that's the buffer that's okay. the buffer yeah 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 okay so that's cool. the, the so yeah. that's outlining what he can't touch yep um and the, what he can where he can use but he's only using that green you know that it shows the uh, proposed private outdoor storage area that's what he's looking to do yep. but um, if you look that blue hash line all the way it shows your um, perimeter lines. So he's meeting all his, his setbacks for that shed. Okay. Um, Gonna have power to the shed? That's the plan, yep. There's a pole right in front. Any issues with the access, traffic access, off of Nassan Road? No, yeah, it's a pretty, um, and you're only expecting, you know, a, he's, what do you do, a, you probably use one piece of equipment a day or? Yeah, I mean, in a yearly basis, over a year, we might add a car a day, because, you know, our busier times, there might be three to five cars, but for four months in the winter, there's none, so. It's not going to really impact. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and it's it's smaller equipment. You say like skid steer. Yep. Yep. So Everything is under ten thousand pounds. Okay. All right. The heaviest thing we have is like nine thousand pounds. And all your stuff is done online. It's more of just going to be a yep. storage spot, pick up yep. and drop off. Exactly. Maintenance is done at other shops, not on the property. Same thing with fluid changes yep. and things like that, correct? Yep. So no storage of fuels or no, anything No, we like fuel that. them up at Boonies. Okay. Yep. They'll be sitting there with fuel in them potentially. Mm-hmm. So catastrophic. We'll have a spill kit there. That's yeah. intention with that shed is to keep that kind of stuff inside that shed. Okay. And that's that entrance way is gated currently. You said. Yeah, it is. Yep. It's actually got rocks and gate. Um, I'd, I'd open, move some of the rocks, but that's all I'd be yeah. doing. But it's lockable, securable yep. to prevent. Yep. It access. is. That's okay. So this shows, this kind of shows you what's there. Uh, a few years ago, I'm pretty sure this Google Maps is not current, um, but that landing is already cleared and uh, his discussion with me was that he just wants to bush hog that area. He's not gonna bring gravel in or anything like that. He just wants to mow it. Yeah, and it's already got a good driveway. So he's not disturbing anything other than parking the equipment on it. And that was a, that was a logging landing yeah. in its previous time. <laughs> Should we do a site walk? 
We haven't scheduled that, right? We haven't done anything. So you got a site. You can you can schedule a site walk in a in a public hearing. Um, oh yeah. We need to do public yeah. Hearing. The um, and then we yeah. I can't count on the uh, newspaper article passing, but that's going in front of the town on the tenth. Yeah, so we got to plan it. Plan, right I'd rather plan ahead then. Yeah. So when could we do the public hearing if we make a motion today? Um, it would, so you do your site walk and then you do it in the first week in August. July. July, right? Because I don't have, I won't have 10 days in circulation right now. I need to, I need to have it 10 days in circulation. Um, so I would have to do it for the first week in August or first first week in July. Sorry. <laughs> um, do you want to do the site walk on the fifteenth, seventeen hundred? Yeah. Or eleven a.m. is fine with me. <laughs> Good try. And then that would make the. Uh, Public hearing on the 6th of July. Hey, yeah. That, that gives, if we do that, gives Jason time to do it. Yeah. Get it scheduled. Yeah, we've been doing it right away. So we'll, we'll post it online tomorrow and then we'll send it to the paper so that tomorrow, so that they have it on record so that they know that we need it. You know, a certain time frame. But. Well, I move that uh, we conduct a site walk uh, for Matt Leck at the Nassen Road property, map 230 lot 005002 um, on June 15th at 5 o'clock. And we schedule the public hearing for six o'clock on July 6th. All in favor? We need a second. Oh, you need a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Adam? Don't um, abstain. Yeah, why? Uh, he's uh, a employee. employee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was trying for the 11 o'clock sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. But I did have three pizza at the same time. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, and then after the, he'll be the first thing on the agenda after the public hearing. Yeah. All yeah, right. Sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks, man. Man. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right, next up would be James Wood. 111 Yetton Lane, map 233, block 035, conditional use for ground mounted solar array. How's it going? So, is this a sun chaser one? Is it going to follow the sun? Uh, no, it'll be just solid. It's like steel frame. Um, I didn't. Did you include it in their packets or not? No. I didn't include it in your packet. It's more, and I can if you guys want to. I'll give it. I'll send you home with one. But it's more of just a installation guide. It's really not giving you much on. Um, if you guys want it. Are they using the ground screws with this one, the helical yes. piles? Yes. So you're going to have a little disturbance. This is personal use. Yes.
So you're planning on putting it right here in this corner? Well, I can bring it out exactly to you if you'd like. Let's see. Okay, there's a, an old shed here that, that'll basically go right there. Right, right in front of that. So no trees are coming down? Or? No trees are coming down, no sir. That's all clear. Not visible from the road? Nope. You're tucked away pretty good? Not even, I don't think it will really be visible to my neighbors either. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in the winter time. So it's, um, are these ground mounted? Mm -hmm. or? Yes, yeah. ground screws. Okay. And how many panels? Do we have anything uh, on the actual? Yeah, I think it's 16. 16 yeah, 16. Yeah, residential ground mounted solar array with 16 panels, 490 watts, and one by six inverter. One by 6,000. Same thing, Mr. Chandler. We'll see it and schedule our meeting. Can we do two uh, public units and yeah, yeah. Um, what do you do? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, you do one public hearing. It's uh, usually do them first off. I mean, did you want to do a public hearing and then deal with the applicant, or do and then do a public hearing? You want to do two public hearing one after another and then deal with. One after another. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't suspect they're very controversial. I, I think we could do one after another. I'll yeah. Launch right into I feel the, good with that. Okay. Process. And site walk at 4.30? Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I propose... Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to conduct a site walk um, at 111 Yeaton Lane, tax map 233, lot 035, at 4.30 on, what did I say, 9 June, is that right? No, 15th. No, uh, yeah. 15th and the 6th. 15 June, and uh, additionally conduct the public hearing at following the uh, initial town hearing that day at approximately 6.30. Should I get a uh, second? Second that. All in favor? All opposed? That's it. I'll see you on the... So, yeah, on the 15th, they'll, they'll be at your property at 4.30 uh, okay. for the site walk, just to get a visual of it. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank right, you. Thank you. Um, I have a gentleman here who has a question. He wanted to talk to you guys about uh, possible. Uh, um, I just want to see where you, where to go forward with it. You? Hi, good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, Dennis Dias. I bought uh, a house on Sam Page Road back in February. Um, Love to fish. Met with Brian Beatles, running Beatles Tackle Store. Found out that his dad was really sick and they will be selling the business in the fall. Um, Brian told me that he is paying a thousand dollars a month rent. That being said, if I bought the business, I'd have to come up with twelve thousand dollars a year before I would begin to make a profit. My question is, could I put 
that business on my property. I just took some photographs. I'm sorry, I, I think it's six of you. I thought there was five. <clears throat> oh, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I'll go through them if you'd like, gentlemen. The first is just my home and the arrow showing the uh, apparently when they when they did a lot of work on this house it was an old farmhouse they redid they cut this road in the back and they I guess brought a lot of fill that uh, I'm thinking would be a great uh, driveway for the for the actual tackle store and then the second picture the third is showing I would have to do a little brush cutting and of course some excavating in the back of the property to uh, do that the big tree I would like to leave um, almost have like a rotary going around for the exit for the parking yes yes sir um, I don't know if you can see my handwriting the area I was looking at is 93 feet wide by 103 feet uh, or excuse me 103 wide by 93 uh, long uh, had some uh, water in the basement so I paid to have a French drain put in the property that's the machine you see on the property and then a um, little bit of the uh, the plot plan there showing in uh, my little sketch of, of where the business would be and then the last page is the uh, building I'd like to propose to, to put on that up said property sir and I was just finding out if it's something feasible that could happen. What district is it in? He's in the village. So if you go back to the what we were just what we were just talking about, professional and businesses services having less than twenty five hundred square feet of gross floor area that brings them into conditional use. Other than that, I don't. He's not. It's a tackle shop. Tackle shop. Uh, right? Yes, sir. Bait and tackle. And what are you thinking for approximate square footage of the building? Uh, 30 by the, the last page shows the uh, building oh. um, I'm proposing to, to put on that property. Okay. 30 by 30 be 900 square feet. I uh, did the square footage with Brian Beatles. He has approximately 683, but it's very tight in there. So I was hoping for nine to open it up a little bit. Like two, two of the aisles, you uh, two people can't even walk down. You got to kind of one at a time. Gotcha. What would you do? I see parking. Are you gonna? What's the parking plan? Parking spaces, paved gravel. I would probably do gravel, sir. Actually, the uh, gentleman that did the excavating in the French drain, there was uh, probably two or three yards of gravel left over, and he. I probably should have snapped a picture. He finished today, and he that proposed driveway he took it and laid that uh, uh, extra there today pretty open along there any issue for getting in and getting out traffic wise it's all wide open yeah it's a straight shot quick shot <clears throat> Conditional use? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree. I don't, you know, we don't have a specific right. tackle shop, bait shop called out, but um, it's would you be storing the Would you be storing any boats there, like Beatles does? No, sir. Okay, sorry. Bait and tackle, and Brian was saying like the, uh, the, uh, the rafts that they tow. They put those out front in the summertime and they sell the heck out of them. Right. But no, 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 sir, no boats. Right. <clears throat> any restroom or anything inside it? I'm sorry? Any restroom or anything? Uh, do I need to? I, I, I don't know. In a retail building, do you need to have a restroom? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I need to, I would definitely conform to that, of course. 
do, uh, do you I'll, mean I'll do in the winter, on that one. operate in the winter as well for I'm sorry sir you'd operate in the winter as well for bait for ice. Yeah, my my idea would be to uh, Wednesday through Sunday uh, six in the morning till two in the afternoon uh, Monday and Tuesday off because I like to fish too <laughs> and maybe take a month off between your your fall season and before the ice is enough to ice fish right. just to have some me time yeah, yeah sure. that was my 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 idea any fly fishing equipment? Yes, sir, there is. Okay. I'm, ba I'm, I'm basically <laughs> not buying Brian's business, but bu buying all Brian's stock. Okay. Let's see that you get a real. He makes his own lures, Chris. I do make my own lures. Oh, huh? not the ones at the trading post selling out of the bottle caps, were they? Uh, no, I was. I moved from Nantucket, and I actually do soft plastics, and I do uh, lead, everything from jig heads to like cod fishing stuff. Yeah. And I powder coat the lead and the soft plastics. I have injection machines. I probably have, I would say, forty to fifty soft plastic molds. Everything from little like rubber jigs to like striped bass, big. It's fun. When I was in Nantucket, I had a carpentry and caretaking business. I took care of 31 homes and did all the maintenance myself, and I was still making ten to $15,000 a year selling the tackle nice. to, to the tackle stores. Is that what we call an conditional use drone? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. I just wanted to run it by you guys before I had him do the, some leg work. Of course, surveying, excavation, things like yes, sir. And of course, I would come back to the board with an actual definitive design, you know, where the building's going to be when I get all that in, in order. I just didn't want to go spend a bunch of money and then have you gentlemen say no. Well, <laughs> John would work too. Well, just because I don't know if it would yeah, affect his septic. We'd have to put a new septic in if it came out. Well, it all would depends be. on what's on there, though, because it's not a bedroom, so they, you don't need. Um, doesn't need to so right now you need 90 gallons per day per bedroom that's they're they're expecting showers tubs dishes this is i think it's like 12 gallons per day so he can, might be even be able to do a small expansion a minor expansion on his system you know i i don't know right this is just pure conjecture but i would think if you have food or drink you have to have a head yeah but if you don't right uh, I don't think you have to. No, I was thinking possibly opening up that hour, hour having a coffee bar. I, but if that's a no-no, then no. And I did want to have an ice machine. But no no food, per se. Hmm. Like a, a coffee bar, like just come in and grab a cup of coffee. like a, Basically like, like a, a Keurig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. You know, so your buddy's sugar. coming over, sitting down like they do at Beagles right, right. right now. Oh, yes, 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 sir. Exactly. Yeah. You're not selling your coffee, fat, you're losing money. Yeah. yeah, not not really like a whole coffee, but you no know, get a cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. No eye openers or anything like that. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, well, if you want to come back in the office tomorrow, I'll give you a, just the just the application pretty much and, and give you some other stuff. Sure. What, what time, sir? I do have a farrier coming over at 9 for my horse, but yeah, no, that's other fine. than that... I should be there most of the day tomorrow, yeah, so... Okay. Uh, I'm there at 3rd or 4th. Yeah, so. he, can, okay. he can assist you, too. Okay. Um, so... Right. Yeah, get right. that filled out and back to Jason, right? Huh? Get it filled out and back to you. Yep. yep. And then we'll get you in front of the board whenever you're ready and get this moving forward for you. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen, very yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night. I'm terribly that. sorry about the phone. I was <laughs> waiting well, to hear good. back from my, my vet uh, about the exam, and uh, one of my knucklehead friends sent me a stupid... <laughs> it, it was well-timed. It was well-timed. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, so I have one more question for you guys I was asked to present you with. I have a... Uh, we have a sub subdivision on... Is it Canal Road? Canal or, yeah, I don't know. It's right as you go on to... Canal Road. Is it Newbridge? It's either Newbridge, so you're heading down across from Corn Pond. Anyway, there's, a, there's a, already an approved 313 lot subdivision. Has not been built upon. All the infrastructure is in there, the roads, uh, guardrails, everything like that. Um, the original plan was set forth for a 55 and older community. Um, the, the, that was the, the set, that was the standard that was asked. And the reason that was because that was exempt for growth permits. 
So this was just purchased by a new landowner, a new developer, and he was looking to see if he could come into the board and have that that condition amended to just not be 55 and older. Um, and so it would just be an amendum to, to the plan. And if I just was like, oh, I'll just present it to the board and see what they say. And, uh, it's an existing it's subdivision. An, it's an point. existing subdivision approved in like 2013. You have it on the map? I just closed out. I'm trying to think where the hell it is. <laughs> I know, that's right here. I know it's that area. Well, yeah, also, so every day. If, it, if we, it's approved and not acted on in some period of time, it's, it's no longer approved. It's got to be. Uh, it has been worked on. It has been worked. So there, if you go there, it's all paved. It just they haven't developed it. Um, the the um, the only one I can think of. It's no, it's it's, it's still fine. I can. The only thing I can think of was was Mount, is Mountain View off of uh, Newbridge. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Newbridge is the one that goes out between Canal <laughs> along Horn Pond, right? Yes. Yeah. It's on so um, that long road. This one. This is here's your subdivision. All these lots. Oh, oh, that's uh. Yes. I know. So I know exactly. I know it's it's completely fine to be built on. Um, it, it is owned by a. Oh. Um, okay. So yes, this is and this ro these roads are in there and, and this is here. There's a giant guard um, cul de sac uh, culvert with guardrails in here. The lots are already done. And it is an improved division. Um, but like I said, it was um, a 55 and older, so he's looking to have that condition amended or amend, uh, removed. Um, well, that's the one that goes up the hill there on the left as you're going up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like concrete. Four concrete. Off to Wilson it, and Horn. Yeah, he's got it like cabled off. There's big yeah. concrete blocks out there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking when you said go past Horn Pond, I'm like. I was thinking Canal Road. Well, I was trying to say Horn Pond, but. Yeah, it's on, but isn't it owned by the house right there? Yeah. It's not owned by him anymore. No, it, it was uh, sold. Um, it was originally. It was originally yeah. owned by by that individual and uh, as another partner of his. Right. Um, and now it has been purchased. Um, you guys really want me to say, don't you? <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> I know. Uh, I so, so Scott McLeod purchased it, and he's looking to have it just regular subdivision. Um, I went through the subdivision ordinance uh, regulations to see if there was anything in the amendment, and I'm, I'm not familiar with the whole thing. Um, he spoke to um, the company that surveyed the whole thing, and uh, kind of was just, yeah, no, no big deal. Just have the board amend it. You know? But I needed to, to I was like, let me talk to them first. Well, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving a yay or a nay without looking at the original what's been approved. We'll do that. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to him, and we'll. I'll have him come into the next meeting, and. Uh, and I, you know, I think Gavin is our resident. Yeah. Site yeah. plan expert. I, I wouldn't be comfortable unless he. I'll reach out to um, the planner that we've used. Uh, I'll reach out to North Star. I'll, I'll chew his ear on this one. That's probably a good idea. And uh, see what he has to say, and um, I'll ask him to. Were they involved back then on it? No, I can see if it was Southern Maine Planning, maybe. I'll look in the folder and see what was there, what was approved. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah. I can almost. So I'll do, I'll do some research, more some research for you guys, too. I wasn't expecting, I told him I'd ask the question, but I wasn't expecting. Um, uh, not Gavin not being here and Pat not being here. It would have helped. That was put in. Yeah. Yeah, I looked to see if there was anything in there. It just talks about waivers, but everything's about application process. How many what years ago was that put in? I, I think it was 2013 is what I was told. Yeah. This is my first note on waivers. It's not uncommon. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a waiver because the waiver's kind of asking you, okay, let's waive sprinkler systems or something like that. So when I spoke to the, the original owner of this property, that's exactly what he told me is why they went 55 and older was because it was exempt from growth permits. And at the time when this was approved, there was people standing in line to get growth permits. That's what the other And so going 55 and above, he didn't have to do that. Growth permit meaning over the 35 or whatever. Correct. Yeah. So when when they start first start doing growth permits 
around this time of approval, um, people they would be gone in the first week, you know, because people or the first day or something like that, because people were camping out. And you had Eagle Trace going. You had other you know growth permits for people in the lake. Um, remodeling, um, well not remodeling, but tearing down and removing, making a seasonal dwelling to a year-round dwelling. But don't we still have that issue? No, no, I didn't use, I used the 34 last year, all year. Yep. Right, but isn't the cap 35? 35, but we not, it's not. We're only at eight right now, I think. Yeah, it's not like it used to be, like, so people used to come in and just get them all at once. The first day of the year? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard some stories from people who actually stayed out in the parking lot overnight to do it. As long as some of them camped out for like a week or two before. Yeah, yeah that's just, I'm sorry. <laughs> How many lots are there? 13, I believe. Um, this lot, I believe, is supposed to be, I was talking to the, the current owner, I think this one's supposed to be a tennis court or something like that. Is the water still or in there? Or one of them is supposed to be a tennis court. Huh? Is that water still in there? Yeah, there's a giant culvert that goes across here. Um, but <clears throat> it impacts where they can build on those lots. Yeah, I mean, I... I'll look at the subdivision thing. Yeah, I want to do that, and then I'll make some calls tomorrow um, and have some discussion. Yeah, it'd be good if we could see what's in the file, the approved file. So those aren't, these aren't considered, there's, yes, there's there a body of water there, but they're not considered in our map. No stream. Nope, I, uh... I clicked on the overlay for streams, rivers, shoreland, resource protection, floodplain, wetland buffers, and you just have the wetland buffer from um, where the uh, Horn Pond Dam is, that little. That's this right here is non-buildable. Um, this is all common space and walking trail down to the water where people have can launch kayaks like was what I was told so what I'll do is I'll make some phone calls on it tomorrow and go from there and we'll bring it back up It's 2013, it seems so much longer. Jeez, time flies when you're having fun, I guess, in life. <laughs> I thought it was in there longer than that. What's up? So I thought it was in there longer than that, but... I might have missed some years of my life sometime. <laughs> So you're gonna bring him in too? Sure. Uh, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Look at the agenda. But I, I just want to get some answers so I can figure out how to proceed with him. And I, that's why I was asking you guys. I wasn't sure if anybody would be familiar with that. Well, I think um, if, there, if there was something in the file we could look at. Yep. And we can look at this. And Gavin comes at the next meeting. I think we could have a, a more definitive discussion. So. All right, I think that's it. All right, before 8 o'clock. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. That it? All right, Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you.